So you may have seen that there are plenty of coaches out there who use tools in and from NLP to help their clients get dramatic change. Have you ever wondered how to use NLP on yourself? Stay tuned, I'll share in this video. Hi, my name is Tiffany Toombs. I'm an NLP and hypnosis master practitioner and trainer, which is really just a fancy way to say I use and teach the tools of NLP in my business and also in my life. In this video, I'm going to share with you three ways that you can start using NLP on yourself today, even if you've never actually been trained in the tools of NLP. So within NLP, the L stands for linguistic. So understanding that our language, both the language we use inside our head in our thoughts, as well as how we communicate to other people, dramatically changes the reality that we see. In fact, there's a part of our unconscious mind called the reticular activating system, or the RAS for short. Now the RAS is the most powerful homing device and GPS on the face of this planet. And anything that we say or think about a lot goes into the reticular activating system and the reticular activating system seeks more of that thing. And so the words that we use become incredibly powerful in creating our reality. NLP helps us understand this so that we can start using words that truly empower us and help us find the future that we want. So knowing this, I'm going to share a couple words and a couple things to keep in mind when you're thinking to yourself and also when you're communicating to others. The first is that what we focus on expands. And so if you're constantly focused on the things that you don't want or the negative, you're going to create more of that in your life. I had a client once who their goal was to get out of debt. Now it sounds like a positively stated goal. They're focused on what they want. But the thing is, is that the word that they're focused on is debt. The unconscious mind doesn't know the get out of debt. It just knows the debt. And so when she started working with me about nine months after setting this goal, she said, you know, I'm, so, I'm just so frustrated because I have more debt now than I had when I originally set the goal. And that's because debt went into the reticular activating system. And so the filters of her mind were set on finding more of that thing. So we want to be aware of what we're focused on and if that's actually going to move us forward or if it's gonna keep us stuck or even move us backwards. The second word to be aware of how you're using is the word not. So if you're constantly using words like can't, don't, or any derivative of not, the unconscious mind is unable to process the not. So if you tell your kids, don't run out on the street, the picture that they get first in their mind is of them running out on the street. If I was to say to you, don't think of a purple frog, what's the picture you just got in your head? A purple <laughs> frog. That picture is what's in the reticular activating system and it looks for more of that thing. So be careful how you're using the word not because you may be disempowering people or programming their mind to go and do the very thing that you're asking them not to do. The third word to remove from your vocabulary completely is the word try. When you use the word try, what you're saying is that the thing that you say you're going to try and do is not worth fully committing to. You will give a feeble attempt. You're sitting on the fence. You're not going all in and you're not all out either. You're going to put in a little bit of effort, but not too much, which all but guarantees your failure. When somebody comes and says to you, well, I thought you were going to make a million dollars this year. You can say, no, 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 I didn't say I would. I said I was going to try. This is one of the ways that we protect ourselves from failure or rejection, but ultimately it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that keeps us stuck. The fourth word to remove from your vocabulary is the word but. When we use the word but, we negate or cross out everything that came before it. I was working with a couple once and one of them said to the other person, you know, I love you, but it really annoys me when. Now, if we were to look at, if we were to write that sentence out, how it would look is, I love you is crossed out and what's more important is how the person annoys them. And so most people tend to use but in their language and it puts the other person on the defensive and oftentimes it leads to miscommunication and hurt feelings. 
Don't turn butt into however. That's just a fancy butt with a bow tie. Drop it from your vocabulary altogether and replace it with the word and. You'll start to see very quickly how this changes your communication and the outcome of those conversations. Now the last word, number five, that we're going to remove from our vocabulary is the word hope. People often talk about, well, I hope this thing turns out. I hope this person buys my product. I hope that that person asks me out. What you do when you hope is you absolve yourself of any responsibility or ownership of the activity or of what's going on. You say, all the power lies in that other person's hands and there's just nothing I can do about it. Now again, this is a great way to keep yourself safe, but it's also a great way to ensure your disappointment because you're not actually taking any forward action. So instead of hoping, just know. Instead of trying, take action. And instead of but, replace it with and. And then focus on what you want. Those are some of the most powerful ways that you can start using NLP right now without even knowing any actual NLP tools. Before I share with you the next way that you can use NLP on yourself, I want to remind you to subscribe to my channel. I am putting out videos exactly like this one and more every single week to help you truly master your mind and unlock the secrets and the potential that lie within your unconscious mind. So go ahead, click that subscribe button and like this video while you're there. Another way that you can start to use NLP now is by understanding how language and communication is received by other people. Oftentimes when we're communicating with people, we are communicating from a state of hypnosis or being entranced and hypnotized by the beliefs that we're holding on to. And we're talking to somebody who is also hypnotized by the beliefs that they have. When somebody is adamant that they just are not worthy or they're just not capable of doing something, they've been hypnotized to believe that is true. Now, hypnosis is not what most people think. It's not getting up on stage and having somebody make you quack like a duck or do a thousand push-ups in a row without even blinking. It's about what your unconscious mind believes to be true. And the unconscious mind is highly suggestible. So within NLP, we learn a number of language patterns that allows us to embed suggestion in the other person's mind so that we can have more influence and persuasion over that person. I'm going to share with you today two of my absolute favorite language patterns from NLP, and I can't wait to see how you're going to use them. So the first is called a mind read. And within this, what we're doing is we're assuming to know what the other person is thinking. Now, anytime we distract the conscious mind, which is the part of the mind that creates the thoughts that you're aware of. So as you're watching this video and you're thinking, wow, that's really interesting. I didn't know that, or I'm definitely going to try that language pattern. I definitely need to subscribe to Tiffany's channel. Those are from your conscious mind. We tend to think this is the part of the mind that's in control because it's the one that we hear and are aware of but it's actually the unconscious mind that's in control. So when we distract the conscious mind, there's a gatekeeper in between the conscious and the unconscious mind. As soon as that conscious mind is distracted, that gatekeeper opens and we're able to embed suggestions into the unconscious mind. So when we use this mind read saying something like, I know you may be thinking how you will use mind reads in your future communication. And I know that if you watch to the end of this video that you will figure it out. By using that, your conscious mind is thinking, was I thinking about how to use mind reads? How did she know? So your conscious mind is distracted with that thought. And meanwhile, I've embedded the suggestion to watch to the end of this video. Now, in order to use these language patterns effectively, we need to know A, how to distract the conscious mind and B, what is the command that we want to embed? I could say something like, I know you may be thinking about how to become certified in NLP. And if you watch to the end of this video, I'll share with you how you can join one of my programs. And so, I've distracted the conscious mind with the mind read of, I know you may be thinking, was I thinking that? Do I want to join an NLP certification? Conscious mind successfully distracted and the unconscious mind is taking on the suggestion of join my program. So that is the mind read. The second of my favorite 
language patterns is called an awareness frame. And this is where we start a sentence with something like, have you noticed? Are you aware? Did you know? Have you discovered yet? Any of those sentence starters where we're bringing somebody's attention to a specific thing. What happens is anything that comes at the end of that sentence or after that sentence starter, our mind takes on to be true. So if I said, did you know that the wall behind me is not actually blue, but that's a light, you are going to believe that it's actually a light and that the wall is not actually blue. Now in this case, it is actually a light behind me and not the wall being blue. We want to make sure that we use these language patterns in an ethical way, of course, because we don't want to be lying and ripping people off. So again, we're going to start with the hypnotic pattern. Did you know? Are you aware? Have you discovered? And then we want to be aware of what is it that we want to, what is the command that we want to embed or the suggestion that we want to embed? Did you know that knowing the tools of NLP will make you a better leader? Are you aware yet that you already know some NLP and that you just need more practice to be able to use it consciously every single day? So you can use these language patterns in any conversation. You can use it to get your kids to clean their room. Did you know that you'll sleep better and you'll have more fun playing with your toys when your room is spotless? You can get it to, you can use it to get your husband or wife to do the dishes or to make more sales in your business. These language patterns are incredibly powerful and I've shared with you just two of over 20 that exist. Before I share with you the last way that you can use NLP on yourself and on others, I wanna hear from you. Take one of those language patterns I've just shared with you, either the mind read or the awareness frame, and I want you to use it in a sentence that you can use in your business or in your life. Practicing here now allows me to help you and just give you any guidance or changes to strengthen that language pattern to get you the best results. So go to the comments below and share one of these language patterns with me. Now the last way that I'm going to share in this video that you can use NLP on yourself is by creating an anchor. Have you ever had an experience where you heard a song and all of a sudden you were transported back to a memory in your childhood? Or maybe you smelled a certain something or you tasted something and you were back in a particular moment that you had experienced years ago. This is called an anchor. An anchor is created when we have an external stimulus, something that triggers one of our senses, at the same time that we're feeling an intense emotion and the two become forever linked in the brain. So in the future, when we hear that song, our sense is triggered, we're reminded of this particular emotion that we felt at that time. Maybe it was the song that you had during your first kiss or your first dance with your husband or your wife. And so we can create anchors intentionally. And I've got a video specifically on my channel, you can check it out here, that will allow you to know step-by-step -step how to create your own anchor. But what does it anchors allow us to do? It allows us to have a happy button. When I push my knuckle here, I instantly feel excited and refreshed and confident and powerful. When I press this one over here, I feel really calm and at peace and so zen because those are anchors that I have created for myself and that I continue to strengthen through my everyday life. So by creating an anchor, you can have an instant happy button or an instant relax button so that you can feel the emotions that you want to feel in an instant. Now, if you're wondering more tools of NLP that you can use both on yourself and others, I want to tell you about my program, the NLP Rewired Course. Now, you can get instant access to this course right now for over 97% off. There's over 20 hours of training in here where I'm going to teach you tools and techniques and even more language patterns so that you can become a powerful communicator, an amazing leader, and have the tools to help yourself and any anybody else when limiting beliefs, fear, or any other self-sabotage strikes. All you have to do to take advantage of this 97% off offer is go to www.thenlpqueen.com or click on the link in the description below. Can't wait to see you in the program and I will talk to you all soon.